What's going on, y'all? It's Greg with Greg Said It. Man, oh man. This roller coaster of a ride with Colorado is an ever going thing. But people ask why. Why do people believe in Colorado? Because if you let people have it their way, it will be all negative. It will be all no hope. It's going to always forever only win three, four games for the silly people, for the clowns. That's funny. And some people are actually do enough to believe it. I, you know, hope and a strategy. What Coach Prime them is doing out there, what their recruiter team is doing out there, it's not a hope strategy. They put in the work. When that man told you this is the year of the get me now, you better get me while I can or why y'all can, that's, I felt it. And I think people, treat him like some kind of simp i guess you know he just his words mean nothing because when he said it i don't i don't think we had any reason not to believe him unless you had hope that he was playing because he ain't done nothing but that since and every single step he's made since then it is to correct and it is to go to that next level of domination like he promised people mocked him played with him i don't know why i don't know why people take so much uh, excitement so much of a game to, to, to mess with a guy of that caliber, that that level. I mean, at every level he's performed, why would he lie? Why would he not be able to produce? This whole college football thing has got out of hand where you say, oh, he knows nothing because he's not one of us. Just maybe he's more in a lot of ways. It may not be in your knowledge, but in what he has, maybe it's more. And maybe that's what those people are really afraid of, but the people who latch on to it foolishly, like you got skin in the game, you're going to look really crazy. Because them people who he's actually going against, who actually have skin in the game, they're shaking in their boots. Now, you may ask me how come they ain't won nothing. Well, they sure have been winning the portal. And they've been, now they're winning in, in the four-star and five-star rankings. So it went from he can't get nobody so he can't get nobody out of high school. Now he's getting them out of high school. And now that thing is stacking up. And it's not one year thing. It's not like last year where he got a bunch of guys who can be in and out. He getting a lot of young quality guys who could be here for the next three, four years. So when you say he's not building a program, he's not there to stay, you're starting to look pretty crazy. What you see going on right now is the beginning of something very interesting. And you can look at it from a few different ways. He started off talking about Florida this, Florida that, Florida boys. Nobody paid attention to the footwork and what he was doing in Georgia. Now you just got a big slew of people of Georgia coming in. Now that Georgia pipeline is seen to pass over Florida, especially when it comes to the quality of players and the rankings. Now you've seen big linemen transfer over. Say he didn't have a line. They were getting just bullied. Now he's bringing big, young linemen on both sides of the ball. But when we look at the offense and what he's done recently with O-Rings, Flapjack Owens, and Kirkland, and, and you're seeing what he's coming with the high school ranks now. We just had a big signing of a high school player, top-ranked high school player. And it's interesting because that is the type of guy that he said he couldn't get. They've been too busy trying to say what the man can't do. Foolishly. You didn't see what he could do. You told him what he couldn't do. I don't think it's too much he couldn't do. He have the resources and he have the credibility, the, the relationships to do it. Yet you jumped ahead. Say all he can get is DBs. Skilled players. He can't recruit this. Just because he came in the portal late. And it's like now he's getting big, young, top quality linemen. And it's looking scary because he's rivaling everybody who would normally get those guys, the Alabamas, the Michigans, the Georgias. Now he's right in there. It's not just the skilled guys he's in there now. Now he has big load hurt over there. Now he has Warren Sapp and, and, and Lewis over there. And it's like, what are you really looking at is he bought the top quality trenches guys that's going to be able to relate and connect and attract the guys. That's what made us foolish. Just because... You don't say he couldn't do it. That don't mean he couldn't bring the people in to do it. 
And why wouldn't them people want to work with him? They played with him, they played against him, or they admired him. Why wouldn't he be able to bring the people in, the Coach Reds? Why wouldn't you better bring the people in that can recruit these guys? You seen nothing but that. Now everybody really shaking because they thought it was a joke. Now that he's going after Juju. And you send all the signs around it. All those Georgia boys who he played with and around and against are there. They're committing. They're young. And you see the culture being built around. That'd be a perfect draw and fit for Juju. And now everybody really tripping. Like, oh, shucks. This can happen for real. USC don't slid out. Oh, it's just putting you on Auburn. Now it's 90%. But you look at the signs, now they playing with you. Same way Jordan Seaton did. And then they taking these symbolic pictures. And then they send these symbolic tweets. And they, the laughing don't stop. Now the panic in his head. You went and got linemen that have connections with this guy. Taking pictures with this guy. They're making plans for the future. They're going to be the guys to block for this guy. He's coming in with people he get to grow with. Not just coming into a program with a bunch of guys that's older than him that's going to be leaving. But he got a class of guys that's surrounding him before, doing and after him that he knows. These young guys want to go where they can relate, not just to the city and the college, but the players. You custom building it for him to come in with people he already know. There goes your camaraderie. There goes your chemistry. When you're bringing in guys, these last couple of portal cycles, pay attention. You're bringing in guys in clusters. You're bringing in siblings. And everybody talking that unity stuff. How much unity do you have when you're bringing in guys, especially this last group, where the future is built on these guys who play against and with each other. And they're going to help attract and recruit other guys of the same quality that they play against and with. And the people are going to say, what happened? What happened to this put together team of a bunch of random portal people? And now you're not seeing the blocks starting to stack. You're starting to see young running backs come in, young old linemen come in, young D linemen come in, young secondary come in, young quarterback about to come in, young receivers in, and all these boys. You look up and say, oh, we should do a Travis Lee, and y'all got to get a whole new team. But these guys are coming back next year. Have you realized that defense is young? Have you realized that most of those linebackers got at least a couple years left? Have you realized those D linemen that you point out outside of Hayes and Shadoze, they're young? And B.J. Green got a lot of young, talented edge rushers, young tackles. Young ends. You got a lot of young secondary. Those guys looking to play going to be there next year. McKinney, Hood. You bring these young freshmen. Boozy, Garcia. No, that Garcia Lopez. Garcia's linebacker. Linebacker core, very young, very talented. Over this year and the next year. And yet you're still joking with this man. He literally told you, you was in the year of get me now. Because it's looking like you're not going to catch him. He's he winning this year, which he's been building. Next year, these guys going to have been playing together. Young talent that's going to be here for the next two, three years. It's going to look a lot like how those Clemson programs look. Consistency, a lot of returning players. It's challenging in the, in the era of the portal. But when you look at it, these guys are going to get the chance to play together for the next two, three, and some four years. And it's going to be looking like at some point they're just reloading, not rebuilding. The rebuilding days are over. He's not bringing in a bunch of grad transfers and seniors to fill a roster anymore. He's bringing in four and five stars like everybody else that everybody else wants. There goes your theory and nonsense of him only getting backup players that nobody want. Lower level, lower tier players. Never getting high school players. How do you build a program that way? You've said your last falsehood. 
Can't say none of that mess no more. We're gonna have to find something new to say. Welcome to the new Colorado. We're gonna see how that works out for you. For those who want to pick on the underdog, who's the overdog, mocking Coach Prime, you can either go run and hide, or you're gonna have to look yourself in the mirror and put yourself on a Colorado hat. Or you're just gonna have to continue to be a clown going against the new dominant force that's gonna be in the playoff every year. I know it hurts to see that. And it's gonna hurt to say it. Maybe you never will. But hey, I'm just Greg. Greg said it. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll talk to y'all soon.